Hey guys, my name is Titan and I welcome you to yet another episode of my City Skyline series Widerstein. It is episode 39 for today and concerning my plans for today, I'm yeah, I'm thinking we, we're gonna stick to the general area again, to the general area we've been um, working on in the last few episodes. And for today, I'm really gonna push all these rural highlands further. And the idea I have is, bear with me, pretty much this whole area right here. So it's gonna be lots of fields, at least one village with the um, with the thought in mind that the villages in this original location where Wederstein originally comes from is, or, or these villages are much bigger than this little thing here. So I'm gonna see how I can incorporate that. And of course, you see it also on the title, I want to do a little, um, yeah, sort of aviation field for private, um, yeah, private airplanes and stuff. So without further ado, let's just see what we will uh, be able to do right here. And so with that, we start right into the time lapse. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is sort of, yeah, um, a bit of a connection to the area we did in the last episode. And that is just a little creek um, right here that sort of has its source on the highlands that we are going to develop right now and feeds the small middle pond we did in the last episode. Just to, um, yeah, it, because it sort of felt wrong that um, there is this mill pond that, that there is no sort of stream actually feeding it. And I just wanted to, uh, yeah, fix that. And the way I did it, you just saw it basically. I just used some of Ronick's stream decals and one of Mac Welshman's rural roads to, yeah, get a bit of a pre decorated riverbed. And that actually gave a pretty, um, yeah, a good look right there. So now to the actual. <laughs> topic of this episode. We start this whole area with um, lots and lots of fields and a few roads that I'm detailing right here. And you see that um, yeah, I somewhat show in detail the way I'm using um, the intersection marking tool mod right here. And that is just due to the fact that I'm going, I'm going to copy this setting that I just created quite a few times on yeah, this map from now on. Um, you can see me copying it right 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 now well in a few seconds you will see me copying it and yeah i just made um these intersections a bit larger so that they fit these um yeah rural roads and uh, yeah added these line markings there and set a preset so that i can use this preset on every of these intersections and then we just start with field painting uh, in terms of time I spent on this episode, a large portion was um, yeah was used on sort of field painting or field plopping, because I don't want to use the um, uh, surface painter tool to you to yeah paint fields because it just doesn't look right. It just doesn't feel realistic. Um, I need decals for that, and you see my way of doing this. I set up PO decals and um, set the viewing distance to somewhat like 10,000 so that they don't disappear and just plant the whole field with these stickers. And then on the edges of those, um, I adjust the vertices so that I can squeeze them into the just the right shape. Uh, be careful that you also lower the vertices to ground level. That is so that um, there is no glitching um, from weird camera angles. And once all that is done, and it actually, yeah, is a task that is somewhat monotonous but actually goes quite fast too. You see here I just copy huge amounts of decals all at once and of course because they are uh, POs they don't count to the prop limit so I can just spam these everywhere and have some great looking realistic fields without um, yeah, caring for the prop limit but also without spending too much time. On it and so that is a yeah, just simple way of doing rural areas and farmlands that I can definitely recommend to you and you will see it in the end or you see it already actually that it yeah it just really pays off to have all these uh, farm and field decals there and it just it actually feels like a like a realistic 
rural farmland area, so that is really great. Now we move closer to the village that I already mentioned at the beginning that I want to establish here. But before we go into the actual village, there is yeah this little um, this little area right here. And um, I took this idea from the original location or the yeah, role model location of Vedastein. And up here there is not only a village, but there are also some yeah sort of small private gardens for people that live in the city and don't have a garden in their apartment, so they rent these little um, allotment um, or similar to, similar to allotment um, yeah, places here to yeah, just have a little garden and a little countryside retreat uh, where they can um, go and just relax and also grow their uh, very own vegetables and stuff. And that is what I wanted to do here as well, to sort of yeah, set the mood and transition smoothly from all these huge fields to the village. And a special, maybe not special, but a feature um, that I'm going to do here for the first time, um, but I'm going to copy later on a lot of times, are these small fields here. So I used PO to um, decrease the size of these farm decals, uh, just so that I can use them in these small allotments as, um, yeah, small personal, um, yeah, uh, fields um, where you, you know, just plant your own, I don't know, um, maybe potatoes, tomatoes and whatever. And so that is, yeah, definitely um, an important po an important point in these, in these uh, yeah, little plots of land here. And actually that's it for this first part of the episode. Uh, you see I cut a lot out here, but uh, yeah, it just looks great and I'm very satisfied with it. So with that, we move to the um, yeah to the village part of this episode, and I actually cut almost the whole process out of this video just for the fact that I plopped and detailed, I'm sure at least a hundred um, of of lots and backyards and stuff which is nothing that I need to show really. It was just such a monotonous task and it took me days actually. Uh, let's not mention that, okay? Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, we, let's start with this village here. So um, the first thing we did was of course laying out some roads that um, yeah, will, will be the basis of this village. And the first building of this village here is this, yeah, this, little, yeah, this little farm area I'm doing right here. Um, the thought I had in mind for this is that it's um, still used as a farm, but primarily it is, um, you know, it maybe has a small B&B or it has a restaurant, um, which is, yeah, very, very common here. And I'm sure also in other areas and other countries that are just these, these farm, farm places that um, uh, yeah, have some B&B or some restaurant. And that is what I wanted to emulate here. So we. Um, add some parking spaces right there and uh, Before yeah at the end though, I think I cut that out as well because you know time constraints and stuff and um, at the end also some tables and umbrellas and stuff just to yeah, make as usual the area feel more alive and uh, Yeah, make it uh, just just look more realistic by adding all these little little details about this whole farm or what I what I suppose what I designate to be a farm area there is not much more to say um, just using some yeah um, farm props like trucks or haystacks that's actually all you need to sell uh, a piece of land as a as a farm <laughs> and it's actually it's just working fine so now onto the actual village and you just saw me copying these um, these umgebinde houses are already plopped and detailed in the last episode and that is what I what I did for yeah a large part of this village that I just copied um, other other houses and backyards that I already detailed in previous episodes because yeah there's no need in reinventing the wheel the wheel with every episode so let's actually focus on new things like this church 
I wanted to have a church here, which I guess makes sense for a village, but I didn't want to reuse the same, I don't know, two or three village churches again and again. So the idea he had, uh, the idea I had here is to combine two churches. So there is this yellow church from um, Sven Berlin, and there is this, um, yeah, slate covered church from Acapulco that I just, um, yeah, combined. So I yeah, increase the um, the nave of the church in Acapulco just a little bit so that it fits more with the dimensions of the tower and I also yeah um, sort of made the tower of the church from Sven Berlin a little bit wider and also a bit taller just so that it gives a nice picture overall and I actually also changed the roof into a bit more of a copper color even though it's a solid color and looks a bit cartoony uh, but it it sells the point and it's a bit of a different church so that definitely helps now you always you see it there there's a lot of uh, buildings already placed and detailed which I just cut out for uh, reasons already mentioned so let's actually focus on again the new things which is this little uh, village square here um, I decided to go for just a big square, you know, maybe back in the days there was a little village pond there, but nowadays it's a square. There was this um, cafe here and the whole square is just covered in gravel uh, with which I just wanted to yeah, also sell the fact somehow that it's, yeah, it's still a very, very rural um, area here and that is not everything here is uh, is paved and covered in concrete or asphalt. It's still, um, yeah, just, just, I, w I don't want to say neglected, that's um, definitely the wrong term, but it's just, yeah, a bit laid back. Uh, maybe that is a better term there. So the whole place is just um, covered in gravel, um, but yeah, that's really nothing negative about it and just to get more life into the area the usual trick with some benches and some ppgs to um, lure some people into the area on the opposite side here in front of the church and these two buildings that i guess would be the town hall of the munici municipality and um, that consists of this village and probably some other villages that um yeah um sort of form a munis municipality and um, so sort of the town hall and church here this square on the other hand I wanted to be paved uh, just to yeah you know it's the church square and the sort of town hall square so it has to be a bit more yeah orderly maybe um, but then again on the other side of the church a simple um, a simple cemetery and that one is then again, a bit more on the yeah, rural side. So there are some graveyards and, and gravestones and stuff. Um, but other than that, there is not much like more going on. There are no paved um, paths here. You see, I just use these um, mulch, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. Um, decals from King Leno. And the trick that I'm using here is just that I rotated them randomly so that uh, they don't look too repetitive and it's just a believable path. It definitely works. And you know, just some flowers, some trees all around. Um, not much, it's just a small cemetery on the countryside, but it definitely works. And I think it looks fitting for a small, uh, yeah, village cemetery. With that being done, I placed probably the most high-rise buildings of this whole episode. Um, the fact just being that these are wall-to-wall -wall buildings, which um, otherwise don't exist in this village. But that is just because, you know, back in the um, 1800s, there was this slight and short era of, of yeah, development in the in the village right there, and so. These few wall-to-wall um, -wall buildings got built, even though um, they as well only have one or two floors. But it's a little bit of a yeah, um, high street situation that I wanted to get there. Um, of course, nowadays with um, the need for such big buildings pretty much gone, um, I imagine they are either empty or just yeah, um, converted into a residential area. Now. Um, 
This building here is a rather new building on the workshop. It's a um, kindergarten, kindergarten slash um, elementary school building from Acapulco. And I, yeah, I wanted to include this in one of the of my builds for, yeah, for pretty much since it uh, since he uploaded it to the workshop, and so I'm happy to finally do that here. And I decided to make this little, uh, yeah, kindergarten area. Reason being that a kindergarten area is much easier to develop, and I didn't have the motivation after already 20, 30, 50 backyards to do a huge school here so I just went for a kindergarten situation but it still works it still works and um, I suppose um, this village being right next to Wederstein which is the uh, big city here in the area and um, a kindergarten probably makes more sense than a school so I imagine that all the uh, school children would just go to Wederstein to school and yeah the kindergarten uh, remains in the village and the way I'm doing this is yeah pretty straightforward I have these two large sandboxes that I am, am happy to use um, Sven Berlin's um, animated swing props or swing buildings to you know have movement because that is it's just important otherwise it looks like a like a um, uh, like a rail model railway where there's no movement and it's all just still isn't would that be annoying so here it is a quick overview over the finished village and I am very satisfied with it and it actually has a size that is believable as opposed to the last episode so now actually to the name giving part of this uh, this episode which is this aviation field this airfield this um, little um, countryside mm, yeah private airfield for private pilots and their um, small planes. I never did something like that before, so at the beginning I wasn't quite sure how to do it, but I looked at some real life examples of those and I got an idea. So what I did is, first of all, I used this empty um, aviation club building that someone, I fear I forgot the name, I'm sorry, uploaded to the workshop and just to check where do the planes start so um, that I know where I have to lay out the runway which I'm doing right now and the runway um, I'm using these manicured grass decals that I um, converted into PO to yeah just give a bit of a um, yeah runway look in the sense that the runway rather or as opposed to the um, other grass all around this airfield is um, carefully maintained so that um, the planes actually can get enough speed so that they, they can take off and yeah so I use these um, yeah these these um, manicured grass decals to sort of emulate or simulate or I don't know illustrate um, uh, lawn mowers going there frequently just to um, keep the grass low and make it possible for airplanes and to further um, show that I use these rare decals these road rare decals to show that this is the part where the most planes take off and land and you know the grass is worn down and it's more dirt than grass and yeah just make it more believable you know because having only grass there as it was before these rare decals it would look like it would look totally out of place and so it's much more believable with these road wear decals now all around the um, the uh, uh, damn it I just had the word it's gone anyway <laughs> uh, the runway thank you um, right uh, just around the runway I yeah, plopped some dirt decals a lot of um, lawn tufts to yeah because it's just grass there it's kept the grass is kept low, but other than that, it's just grass. Um, yeah, just to show that, you know. And now the, um, yeah, the sort of airfield facilities. And I went for a sort of very, very small rural um, design here. So there are no real hangars uh, aside the big one that is on the right side now. Other than that, the planes just um, have these two tents there that I guess um, yeah, are from some well-off private pilots here. And other than that, the planes just stand 
um, yeah, on on the on the um, field there, exposed to the elements, which I suppose makes sense for a small area like this. I used these huge um, dirt or uh, mud decals there that I um, sort of made a little bit um, transparent by moving them up or down. I'm not sure. Uh, so that they blend together with the grass that is beneath them and I think it's it gives a very very great um, Yeah, and believable look right there and the buildings I used um, that you see right here are Some new buildings Pavix made and uploaded to the workshop. They are Designated as residential buildings, but I think they just work just as well here as sort of you know There is there are some toilets there is um, there are some mechanics or mechanical workshops. Um, there's maybe a cafe I imagined um, for this um, private um, pilot association that is here. And yeah, it's just yeah, some some facilities still have there. What I'm doing here with this container is that um, for planes that have no motor, I. Fear I forgot the proper name on it again. And for planes that have no motor, so planes that are just um, um, pulled into the air and then just glide through the air, um, they are usually stored in those small boxes. And I emulated these small boxes by using containers and POing them. And uh, yeah, I think it's believable if you know what it is. So yeah, it works for me. And yeah, I noticed that the uh, manicured manicured grass still looks a bit out of place with the sharp edges. So what I did is just, you know, at the borders, rose it or moved it closer to the ground so that it blends together a bit better. And sort of the last thing for today was that I just, damn it, it was too quick, that I um, yeah used the PO module to get a bit of movement. So if you switch back for a few seconds, you see it again. Um, that plane, um, I just yeah added a little PO module animation there so that it just drives back and forth on the airfield. And with all that being said, that's it for the episode. We're already 23, 22 minutes into the episode, so I think that's a good time. I really thank you for watching. I had some great fun, although it was monotonous to build all these backyards. But anyway, I had some great fun in the episode and I really hope you as well like the whole outcome of today's episode. That's it. Thank you for watching. Um, thanks to all my patrons that support me. It's amazing. And if you want to support me as well for early access to assets and videos, just as this video has been at least a day, but hey, it's better than nothing. Um, thank you for watching. Feel, uh, yeah, feel free to also support me on Patreon if you want to. Um, and with this before and after shot, and yeah, we did some huge progress today. With this before and after shot, I say goodbye. See you in the next video. And until then, stay tuned, stay healthy. Bye.